stretch your arms, shake it out, and let's dive into GAN. Today, we're peeling back the layers of R3 GAN, the GAN that said, no more tricks, just modern kicks. This paper flips the script on traditional GANs by introducing a stable, mathematically grounded loss function that tackles mode collapse and instability. It shows that GAN don't need a bag of tricks to succeed. While you're watching, join me in a quick upper body stretch. By the end, you might just be stretching your brain as much as your shoulders. Let's get started. You've probably heard that GANs, generative adversarial networks, are notoriously hard to train, right? Researchers often rely on a bunch of tricks and tweaks just to get them to work. But this paper flips that idea on its head. It simplifies GAN training in a really structured way. The authors introduce a new loss function that not only improves stability, but also tackles common problems like mode dropping, where the model misses some variations in the data, and non-convergence. And here's the kicker. They actually prove that this loss works predictably, which is a big deal compared to older methods. What's cool is that this new approach gets rid of a lot of those ad hoc fixes and outdated architectures. For example, they take StyleGAN2, a super popular model, and update it with their minimalist framework called R3GAN. And guess what? Even though it's simpler, R3GAN actually outperforms StyleGAN2 and even competes with top-tier GANs and diffusion models in tasks like image generation and data augmentation. The goal here is to make GANs easier to use without sacrificing performance, giving us a cleaner, more scalable baseline for future research. Now you might recall that GANs became famous for generating realistic images, but they've also been infamous for unstable training. The original Minimax objective is tricky, because it sets up a two-player game that can easily diverge if not handled carefully. Instability, mode collapse, and convergence failures are all common headaches. People have tried various fixes, like style GANs, style-based architecture, and data manipulations. Yet these solutions often rely on scattered tips and aged designs dating back to DC GAN in 2015. Meanwhile, diffusion models and transformer-based approaches have advanced at lightning speed, encouraging the belief that GANs might not scale effectively to large datasets. Here, the authors propose a new loss function that merges relativistic ideas with regularization, resulting in a more stable and convergent approach. By rethinking training from the ground up, they manage to modernize GANs, bringing them closer to other generative models while offering theoretical guarantees. Continuing with that theme, once we have a reliably behaving loss function, many of those old training tricks become unnecessary. With that in mind, the authors construct a modernized GAN backbone by trimming down elements from style GAN and adopting ideas from recent convolutional networks and transformers. They focus on proper ResNet design, clever initialization strategies, and resampling techniques, while skipping normalization layers that can sometimes hamper performance. The outcome is a simpler, easier to implement design that actually beats style GAN in quality. Their contribution is twofold. First, they provide a theoretically grounded, regularized loss function that demystifies GAN training. Second, they offer empirical results showing their approach, free of ad hoc gimmicks, rivals, top tier GANs, and diffusion models in multiple benchmarks. They then introduce RP GAN, a model meant to tackle stability and diversity through a special regularizer. Remember, GANs pit a generator against a discriminator with each trying to outsmart the other. Traditional losses can lead to instability. The authors here aim to fix that. Why do older GAN losses often struggle? Typically, the discriminator tries to split real and fake data along a single decision boundary, which can be too simplistic. This can cause training to wobble or collapse, especially when the generator starts producing a limited set of outputs over and over. The paper discusses a relativistic Goyen loss that compares fake samples directly to real samples, rather than judging them in isolation. This comparison-based approach builds a localized boundary around each real sample, prompting the generator to cover the full data distribution. So, it becomes less likely for the model to ignore entire portions of the dataset. By coupling real and fake examples, they also reduce the chance of mode droppings. The authors further demonstrate that this novel loss functions landscape is free of bad local minima. In other words, it steers training away from suboptimal traps, ensuring every direction you move in produces a worthwhile improvement. This is a big deal for consistent GAN performance.
Now let's talk about RP GAN's training dynamics. Its main goal is to resolve mode dropping and instability. Theoretically, the loss landscape suggests you should be able to reach optimal solutions. However, that doesn't guarantee simple gradient-based methods will actually make it there in real-life training, especially on complicated datasets. To solve this, the authors turn to zero-centered gradient penalties, which have been found to stabilize GAN training significantly. These penalties smooth out the optimization by discouraging large, erratic gradients. They focus on two specific penalty types, one applied to the gradients on real data and another on fake data. Having both keeps training on a steady path, thereby reducing the dreaded instability and nudging the model closer to the true data distribution. This two-pronged approach fills in the gaps left by traditional losses, making RPGAN theoretically appealing and practically reliable. Digging deeper into RPGAN, the paper shows how regularization via gradient penalties underpins local convergence. This builds upon earlier proofs around gradient penalty methods for GANs. There's an interesting connection to adding noise in the training samples. Both tactics help the model balance real versus fake distributions. They also present a handy demonstration using a dataset with many uniformly distributed modes. By using a small network plus a pre-trained classifier, they can assess whether the generated outputs match the target distribution. For a quantitative measure, they use a specific statistical divergence to see how close or far the fake data is from the real data. This offers a clear view of how effective RPGAN's approach can be. Next up, we have some experimental insights. The authors test multiple training objectives on a dataset boasting 1,000 evenly distributed modes. If you look at the figures on this page, you'll see comparisons of different loss functions under various regularization settings. One crucial takeaway is that using only a single gradient penalty can lead to turbulence or divergence. However, combining two penalties makes training stable, letting both conventional GANs and RPGAN thrive. Check out the table here. It shows RPGAN with dual regularization, covering all 1,000 modes, and minimizing divergence between real and generated data. In contrast, classic GANs tend to lag, and even style GAN, which packs additional features, doesn't keep up. This evidence underscores the effectiveness of pairing gradient penalties for robust, reliable GAN training. The core message here is the necessity of regularizing the discriminator on both real and fake data. Relying on just one type of penalty can lead to chaotic gradients that derail training but with two complementary penalties, everything stays on track. The authors then introduce R3GAN, which they describe as a minimalist baseline. Instead of launching straight into the final, polished architecture, they walk you through an iterative process, starting from a familiar backbone, like a VGG style or style GAN inspired network, and systematically stripping away outdated elements, applying the new loss and penalty framework, and leveraging current architectural best practices. By doing so, they end up with a cleaner, simpler, and surprisingly robust GAN. Moving on, we come to a set of experiments designed to keep training conditions consistent. Here, the authors take Style GAN 2, then gradually remove extra bells and whistles, leaving only its essential core. They call this the minimum baseline. It retains style-based image generation plus a few optimization tricks. They then layer on their proposed enhancements, new loss functions, gradient penalties, and so on, to create a more potent model. Look at the table on this page to see how each incremental change improves both the image quality, measured by metrics like FID, and training efficiency. The data clearly shows how these upgrades steadily push performance higher while also simplifying the architecture. Here, the paper dives into some deeper lessons learned from StyleGAN. One key point is that using momentum-based optimizers can destabilize GAN training, so the authors skip momentum altogether. They also steer clear of normalization layers, which can degrade results, preferring instead methods like bilinear interpolation to avoid visual artifacts. Next, they highlight the value of a well-designed loss function. By using their revised loss and gradient penalties, they see less instability, improved training dynamics, and better images. Their architecture also benefits from bottleneck blocks, a common feature in modern vision models. This helps maintain efficiency and stability, reinforcing the argument that a more streamlined design can still be very effective. Now, comparing different architectures for image generation, there's the original StyleGAN 2, a stripped-down version, 
and a new, modern design. StyleGAN 2 inches uses a sophisticated mapping network that converts random noise into an intermediate latent space. But the authors argue that, while it's interesting, it's not strictly necessary. The stripped version removes unnecessary complexities but keeps core functionality intact. Meanwhile, the modernized design swaps outdated parts with up-to-date components like depth-wise convolutions and bottleneck layers to enhance performance. Clean layer designs and fewer gimmicks lead to a lean yet powerful system. If you check out the diagrams on this page, you can see how the layers stack up in each version. Continuing that thought, the updated architecture uses a symmetrical generator discriminator layout, each with about 25 million parameters. They rely on residual blocks and transition layers to keep the network stable without extra complexities. These residual blocks contain multiple layers with carefully chosen operations, like activation functions and convolutions, to refine feature extraction. Importantly, they handle initialization in a way that avoids issues like exploding variants. This means no more need for special tricks such as learnable multipliers. The stem keeps a consistent width, and the authors emphasize principles of cleanliness and efficiency, cutting out redundancies that don't provide real benefits. Here, the authors dive deeper into bottleneck design. They use grouped convolution, a method that splits the data channels into smaller groups, which can improve computational efficiency. By tweaking the bottleneck width, they manage to boost performance without blowing up the model size. Essentially, they reduce the compression ratio, doubling how many channels flow through these grouped convolutions. Then they showcase experiments on the FFHQ256 dataset. If you look at the results and figures on this page, you'll see that using a more stable loss, plus these architectural refinements, leads to fewer training hiccups. They also eliminate older tactics, like output skips, preferring to rely on strong gradient management and modern design choices. In this section, the authors present some compelling results. First, they tweak the bottleneck design with grouped convolutions and an adjusted stem layout, which brings the FID score down to 7.05, outperforming the original StyleGAN 2. That's quite a jump in quality. They also test mode recovery on the stacked MNIST dataset, confirming that their approach nails complete mode coverage without slipping into mode collapse. If you glance at the comparison table, you'll notice their KL divergence metrics are better than the competition. Their final configuration, labeled Config E, emerges as the strongest setup for FFHQ256, offering both stability and high quality image generation. Here, they compare performance across several datasets and configurations. Check out Table 4 on this page. It shows how the new model measures up against StyleGAN and diffusion methods on FFHQ256. The authors achieve a lower FID score with fewer parameters. Some rivals do use pre-trained ImageNet features, which might give them a slight advantage, but those also rely on extra data. Over in Table 5, you'll see results at FFHQ64, where they scale down the model's resolution. Even after trimming away higher resolution components, their model still beats specialized methods like EDM on FID. This points to how flexible and resilient their design is, with no need for fancy pre-training or special purpose hacks. Next, they take on CIFAR 10. Have a look at Table 6 here. Their model, Config E, hits a 1.96 FID, surpassing many larger GANs and diffusion-based networks. For instance, StyleGAN XL has over 140 million parameters, but doesn't quite match Config E's FID. Check the plot in Figure 3 on this page to see how Config E consistently does more with less better FID with fewer parameters. They also emphasize that many competitors use pre-trained classifiers that can leak features and artificially boost scores. Config E doesn't rely on any pre-trained networks, making its results more transparent and arguably more fair when comparing raw generative ability. Shifting to ImageNet32, we see the conditional generation results in Table 7. Config E scores an FID of 1.27, beating out models like DDPM and VDM. And note, it only needs one forward pass through the network, whereas diffusion models often require hundreds or thousands of passes to generate a single image. The authors reiterate that their approach doesn't incorporate any pre-trained ImageNet classifiers. Look at Table 8 where they test ImageNet 64. Again, the model performs well, 
even with fewer parameters than competing methods. The big point here is that it achieves these results without piggybacking on external data or specialized training routines, emphasizing the efficiency of Config E's design. Here, the paper digs into more findings on ImageNet 64. By adding another resolution stage, they keep the model fairly compact, definitely smaller than many diffusion-based counterparts. Still, it manages to get strong scores on the usual metrics. They also examine recall, which indicates how diverse the generated samples are. The model's recall sits at 0.59 on ImageNet 32, outperforming some GANs like Big GAN Deep, though diffusion models might edge it out slightly. The overarching message? A stable, simplified GAN can actually deliver solid performance without relying on a truckload of specialized features. It's all about the core training methodology and architecture choices, proving that minimal designs can still compete with the best. Now let's look at the visuals. On this page, you'll see a grid of faces that highlight how the system produces consistent and clear images. Notice the variation in lighting, pose, and facial details. There's no obvious repetition or glaring artifacts, which suggests the architecture tweaks and improved loss have indeed minimized mode collapse. Each row shows a variety of styles and demographics, hinting that the model captures a wide slice of the data space. These samples underscore the balance between realism and diversity, a key goal in high-quality image synthesis. Finally, the authors wrap up by addressing limitations and ethics. Their minimalist baseline doesn't yet tackle advanced editing features or controlled generation. Things like style injection and multi-head attention are intentionally left out here, though they might be interesting avenues for future work. As with all generative models, there's also the risk of misuse, such as creating deepfakes, which the authors acknowledge. In conclusion, this R3 GAN approach is stable, straightforward, and leverages modern architectural ideas. It avoids outdated training tricks while matching or surpassing state-of-the-art performance in many settings. This makes it a valuable stepping stone for anyone looking to develop or refine GAN-based applications. And that's a wrap. Did you manage to follow the exercise the whole time? How are you feeling after those upper body stretches? We hope they added a refreshing break as you watched this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Stay curious and energized for the rest of your day.